thanks guys, and thanks to the organizers and the judges and all of you guys and our, our future dear overlords uh, for, <laughs> for a wonderful event. And so today I'm going to talk to you guys about the evolution of pelagic larvae in fishes as an adaptation to avoid parent-inflicted mortality. So what does that mean? So what are pelagic larvae? So when fishes reproduce, they release a bunch of eggs out into the open ocean. The eggs hatch there up in this pelagic realm up top. And the larvae develop in that, in that open ocean hundreds of miles away from their parents. So why would this be beneficial? So in the pelagic zone, there are a whole bunch of nutrients uh, readily available. The parent itself is free to not have to spend any energy on parental care. And overall, as a whole, the species can disperse very widely because the, the larvae end up so far away from the parents. However, there is a downside to this. So associated with pelagic larvae is a very high mortality rate compared to other organisms of the same body weight. So this mortality hit is so high that we believe there must be another reason for, uh, for pelagic larvae to evolve. It, it can't be explained by these other factor, the other benefits that we just discussed. So what is an alternate explanation for why you would have pelagic larvae? Well, our hypothesis is that fishes make horrifying parents. <laughs> In other words, it's better to be floating hundreds of miles away from your parent than to risk being parented them, by them if you're a fish. <laughs> so only about 20% of fishes actually have any parental care at all. So let's look at what some of those parental strategies might look like when there is some parental care. So first there's, there's nest guarding. So the per parent fish will guard a bunch of eggs, and you might think, oh, that's nice, the, the daddy fish is guarding its eggs and keeping them nice and safe. Well, in reality, cannibalism is extremely high among nest guarding fishes. Not exactly a great strategy. Another strategy is mouth brooding. So this is a jawfish with a bunch of larvae in its mouth. And if you were to zoom in on the faces of those little larvae, you might see them screaming in terror because cannibalism is also really high among mouth brooders too. <laughs> Proximity to mouth doesn't really help with that. <laughs> also not great. Another strategy is skin brooding, where the larvae actually hatch in the skin and are, are kept there by the parent. In addition to the idea that it's, it's really horrifying to imagine bursting out of your parent's skin when you're born, not, not so great, um, the larvae, when they come out, are often underdeveloped because the parent can't actually hold them in the skin for very long, so the larvae are, are vulnerable to predation, and also it's just really gross. <laughs> and then finally, the, if everything goes great, you're, you, you're born to your parent, um, hanging out with your parent is not a great idea because the food availability is just not that good. So many fishes resort to actually eating secretions off the parent's skin, so I, can, I don't know if you can imagine having to eat your parents' skin in order to prevent yourself from starving to death, but I think that might just be the most horrifying one. Uh, so, and that's pretty much it. There are no other parental care strategies in fish. There are variations on these themes, but that's, those are your options. <laughs> Not great. Another line of evidence that we were interested in is comparing the morphology of the parents versus the, the larvae. So uh, on the top here is a goose, uh, is, they're both goosefish. One is the larvae and the bottom one is the parent and they look quite different. And we believe that this is a mechanism to disguise the larvae from the parents. <laughs> because their parents are so horrifying that they can't help but disguise themselves so their parents can't identify them. This is supported by the fact that it's extremely metabolically expensive to make the transition from larvae to parent, and therefore it must be beneficial for something, and we believe it is a defense mechanism against your parents. <laughs> and finally, going back to this paper where they were trying to, to explain the, the high mortality rates in, in pelagic fishes, we believe that there, this is the model that they presented in their paper, and we believe that this model can be improved not just by considering the weight of the, the organisms, but by considering how horrifying the parents are. So here is a, a, um, a new parameter.
We call this the uh, parent-inflicted larval mortality parameter. Um, it, it's explained by something called the horror factor that's still under development. You can imagine quantifying in some way the level of horrificness of a particular parental strategy. And we believe that developing a parameter like this would actually help to explain a lot of the mortality that you see in pelagic larvae. And finally, we wanted to consider the evolutionary implications of uh, of ho having horrifying parents to begin with. And we believe that it may have been critical in the transition of fishes to land <laughs> trying to escape their parents. <laughs>